Dear sisters and brothers, welcome to the live cast of this Mass for Monday, the 10th of August, 2020. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Lawrence, Deacon and Martyr. Our entrance antiphon. This is the blessed Lawrence who gave himself up for the treasure of the Church. For this he earned the suffering of martyrdom to ascend with joy to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. 
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You will send to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to cause sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, giver of that ardour of love for you, by which St. Lawrence was outstandingly faithful in service and glorious in martyrdom, Grant that we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Thin sowing means thin reaping. The more you sow, the more you reap. Each one should give what he has decided in his own mind, not grudgingly or because he is made to, for God loves a cheerful giver. And there is no limit to the blessings which God can send you. He will make sure that you will always have all you need for yourselves in every possible circumstance, and still have something to spare for all sorts of good works. As Scripture says, He was free in almsgiving and gave to the poor. His good deeds will never be forgotten. The one who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide you with all the seed you want and make the harvest of your good deeds a larger one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm. Happy the man who takes pity and lends. Happy the man who takes pity and lends. Happy the man who fears the Lord, who takes delight in his commands. His sons will be powerful on earth. The children of the upright are blessed. Happy the man who takes pity and lends. The good man takes pity and lends. He conducts his affairs with honor. The just man will never waver. He will be remembered forever. Happy the man who takes pity and lends. He has no fear of evil news. With a firm heart, he trusts in the Lord. With a steadfast heart, he will not fear. He will see the downfall of his foes. Happy the man who takes pity and lends. Open-handed, he gives to the poor. His justice stands firm forever. His head will be raised in glory. Happy the man who takes pity and lends. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Anyone who follows me will not be walking in the dark, says the Lord. He will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my Father will honor him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the feast of St. Lawrence. He was one of the seven archdeacons in Rome. A deacon was appointed in the early church, as we read in the Acts of the Apostles, to provide help, assistance to the apostles especially by taking care of the poor so that the apostles could devote themselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. That is why the vestment of a deacon looks like an apron. A deacon basically is a servant of the people of God and is appointed to assist bishops and priests in their duties. My dear brothers and sisters, but we must be clear because many people have a wrong understanding of what it means to be a deacon. Especially today, when we speak about married deacon, deacons are not second-class priests. We must be clear. And deacons are not so to speak, in between priests and laity. To be a deacon is to be appointed for a specific task and function in the church. And therefore, they are not meant to replace priests because there is this idea that because we have a shortage of priests, then we should have more married deacons. Deacons primarily are called to serve at the altar, minister the sacraments, preach the word, and particularly in the work of charity, which includes administration of the material goods of the church. This is the rule of deacon. And therefore, we must avoid this temptation, sometimes for us priests, to delegate everything to the deacon, to do what is primarily our duty. Proclamation of the word, the sacraments, and prayer. On the other hand, a deacon can be so involved and just ordained for the administration of these sacraments that he has forgotten that his role is one also of service to charity. That is why today when we serve the Feast of St. Lawrence, we are reminded of this close link between service at the altar and the works of charity. These two are intrinsic and they are related to each other in the church. We cannot speak of the Eucharist without charity and you cannot speak of charity without the Eucharist. The Eucharist must always be expressed 
in works of charity. Otherwise, the Eucharist is self-serving. So these two dimensions are closely related. And when we celebrate the Feast of St. Lawrence, we see how this is the case. St. Lawrence, we are told by St. Augustine, not only he ministered the blood of the chalice to the people, but he shed his blood for Christ. What he received, what he distributed, is how he lived his life. So being a priest or being a deacon, to distribute the Eucharist, to celebrate the sacraments, is not the greatest thing unless we imitate what we celebrate. That is why every time at Mass, I say, this is my body, this is my blood. If I don't make it myself, interiorize these words to make myself as an offering of my own body and my blood for the service of the people of God, then the Eucharist is just another ritual that I do each day. That is why in today's Gospel, we have this beautiful text that Jesus says, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. If it dies, it yields a rich harvest. St. Lawrence died to himself. That's why he was not just a deacon, he was a martyr. And it's very important, therefore, for us all that the Eucharist we celebrate requires that we like St. Lawrence, interiorized what we celebrate at every Eucharist. That we too would be like St. Lawrence, be an offering to the people of God, an offering to our family, an offering to society, especially to the poor. And this is where we have the second dimension of today's feast of St. Lawrence. Not only is the Eucharist linked to charity, giving of one's life, Eucharist is linked to the poor. And this is very important because St. Lawrence, he was the administrator of the treasury of Rome. You know, in the early church, especially in those days, the church first priority is always to the poor. And even now, we cannot proclaim the gospel without reaching out to the poor, without attending to the poor. And that's why we have this beautiful story of St. Lawrence who was managing the temporal goods of the church and using them for the service of the poor in Rome. And so when the prefect of Rome heard that the church was very rich, lots of treasures, he told St. Lawrence to surrender all these treasures to the emperor of Rome so that he could finance his army. When St. Lawrence heard of it, he told the prefect to give him a few days to gather all the treasures together. And so the prefect of Rome waited patiently. After a few days, he summoned him. Where are the treasures? And indeed, St. Lawrence, he brought all the treasures to the prefect of Rome. And who were these treasures? They were the poor. All the treasuries he quickly sold away and gave them to the poor. And so he told the prefect of Rome, these are the treasures of the church. So beautiful. Of course, the prefect of Rome was furious and had him barbecued alive. But the point is this, the poor are the treasures of the church. We must never forget that. We were once poor ourselves. In fact, whatever we have all comes from God. We don't own them. We are only stewards. Don't think that because you are rich, because you are talented, because you are successful, 
It is all your own doing. Without God's grace, we will be not where we are today. And that is why we must remember the poor. We must care for the poor. That whatever God has given to us, they are meant to be shared with the poor. That's why the poor are the chosen ones of God. We are told in in the same book of Corinthians in chapter 8, we are told that Jesus, who was rich, became poor for our sake. That is why in today's first reading, St. Paul's letter to Corinthians speaks about generosity. You know, it is nothing great to be rich in talents, rich in money, rich in wealth, in property. Those kind of riches cannot bring us happiness if we are poor in love. Only those who are rich in love are truly rich. So if you are poor in love, you are really, really poor, even though you might have all the riches in the world. Hence, St. Paul tells us, thin sowing means thin reaping. The more you sow, the more you reap. Everything that the Lord has given to us, they are meant for the service of others. And as we serve the poor, as we reach out to others, actually God blesses us in return. God helps us as um, St. Paul says, he will ensure that what we need will be supplied to us and he will give us even greater resources to help others. Whenever we bless people, there will be others who will bless us. And not only bless us, others will join us to bless others. That is why we must always be the mentor to bless people with whatever we have so that others who see what we do will also be inspired to share our joy in blessing others. And this is truly a great gift. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, one last point that we need to learn from St. Lawrence is this. Because the Eucharist and charity, Eucharist and the poor, are so related. Because St. Lawrence was so identified with the church, the church of the poor, It also means to say, to serve the poor, we need the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the source of our strength. That's the trouble with some Catholics, you know. They want to be involved in social work, humanitarian work, which is good. But if they are not rooted in the Eucharist, if they do not come to Jesus for the food, for the strength, They cannot love the poor like Jesus. They will be depending on their own strength, on their own limitations. That is why it's important for those of us who truly love the poor, we must first love the Eucharist. Draw strength from it. Look at uh, the missionary of charity and many other organizations, religious that serve the poor. First thing, at least an hour before the Lord, in front of the Blessed Sacrament, drawing strength. And also in serving the poor, it's not just feed them. Again, sometimes we reduce uh, Christian Catholic charity to humanitarian work just to feed the poor. In the early church, we never feed the poor without giving them Jesus. Because what they really need at the end of the day is not just food. They need spiritual food. They have a soul. We are attending to them, not just for this earth, but for eternal life. So don't forget also to give them Jesus. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness you receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, Lord, the offerings we joyfully make on the feast day of St. Lawrence, and grant that they may become a help to our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of the blessed martyr, Lawrence, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your, your power, and on the fever bestow strength to bear you weakness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, Lord, be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be, says the Lord. Act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, as I celebrated this Eucharist, I'm reminded that you yourself, at the Last Supper, you also assume the posture of a servant in washing the feet of your disciples. You have humbled yourself to become a man, even unto death. Lord Jesus, as I want to receive you sacramentally, which I'm not able to, I pray that you will come to me and give me your Holy Spirit so that I can have the same spirit of service in humility, of giving myself entirely for the service of your people, uniting myself with you, and to make myself, as I receive you spiritually into my heart, that I too will have my body broken for the people that you have given to me under your care, and my blood shed for them. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly implore you, Lord, that the homage of dutiful service which we render on the feast of St. Lawrence may bring us an increase of your saving grace. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, dear sisters and brothers, for praying with us today. A gentle reminder that beginning tomorrow, Tuesday, the 11th of August, right up to the 13th, so Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Mass will be, the live stream of the Mass will be at 8 a.m. So once again, from tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you can join us at prayer at 8 a.m., for the live cast of the Mass. God bless you and have a blessed day ahead.